My name is Danny. I've been working in product for the, more than 10 years now, mostly focusing on growth. And my two biggest stations were Tier.app, which is a micromobility scooter company. For those who are not from Europe, it's very similar to Line or Spin that we have in US. And that is the biggest European player. So I joined the company when it was about 200 people and I left it three years later when it was over 2000. And I saw them scale to 200 million, million annual revenue, which is pretty crazy. Uh, after that, I joined Viv. Uh, B2B SaaS company, very interesting product, video platform for influencers and people who endlessly post things on TikTok, YouTube, um, or Reels, and they need to create some quick videos regularly. That's a platform for them. Also was leading product growth there. Also pretty exciting result. The company scaled from 15 to 25 million annual revenue. Was much smaller than tier, but a completely different uh, setup, like also B2B and SaaS. Um, after that, I decided to leave corporate work for a while, and I'm working right now independently as an advisor, working with startup and founders directly, or running courses and workshops and webinars like that to spread the love for growth and products in general. Cool. Thank you, Danny. I'll take over. Um, I'm very nice to meet everyone. My name is Katya. Um, I'm actually a little nervous. The more I see people are joining, the number goes up. <laughs> I feel my heart beat, uh, but I'm super excited to um, to see all of you. Um, I, um, just like as Danny, I'm currently a solopreneur, uh, mostly doing product leadership um, uh, coaching work. Um, started doing that full time um, after I left 15.5, where I led um, a group of senior product managers. Uh, that was my last full time gig. Um, and being a solopreneur means doing everything yourself, including um, you know, marketing, business development, et cetera. But this is also where I think a lot of uh, my product management and leadership skills come in handy. Um, in the past, I've been at um, ServiceNow. So this is where kind of my big um, B2B enterprise um, experience is coming from. I actually kind of stuck around the B2B side for quite some time. And um, I would say this is my expertise more so than B2C side. Um, I actually, I, I do enjoy being on that um, B2B at some point. I think maybe in 2014, I wrote an article how, you know, being a B2B is actually could be pretty sexy. It doesn't have to be all B2C. Um, and in general, I've been doing product work uh, since 2010. So I've been around the block for quite some time and really started off when, you know, it was all just about kind of product owners and feature work, et cetera. And um, looking at how uh, big the community of product managers and leaders have um, has grown. I'm really excited to see that uh, newer generation of product managers um, coming in, building um, uh, responsible um, new products, uh, products that actually solve problems. And I am really excited to um, kick us off with, um, with this topic on how to increase your visibility as a senior PM. Uh, personally, I remember that's been a problem of mine when I was back at ServiceNow. Um, it's always felt like, so what do we actually have to do? And all I was hearing from my manager was, oh, just being more strategic. So I hope our presentation will kind of unpack a little bit for you what does it actually mean to be strategic and how to increase that visibility. So we'll cover um, a few areas today. Um, first, we'll start with um, what seems like uh, maybe a little bit vague or uncommon um, topic to talk about when talking about increasing your visibilities, about your strengths and self-awareness. Um, then we move on talking about how to actually find opportunities within your organization that can be directly linked to those strengths that you've just uncovered. And finally, we'll um, talk about how do you actually leverage results from the opportunities that you've uncovered and led um, and created impact in your organization so that you can accelerate your career growth. And we'll finish up with the Q&A. So with, uh, um, with that, um, the majority of PMs, um, I, I, I was in that first categories, in the first category, um, you know, we end up doing um, some discovery work if we are working for, you know, empowered organization, hopefully it's uh, more than 50%, but we um, estimate it's probably less than that. Um, but the most part is really delivery. Um, and there are a few PMs that become visible and get promoted and seem to be um, doing doing well while doing what seems like the same uh, work that most PMs, but there is one difference. They actually get to solve big, hairy problems. So today we are here to tell you um, how might you um, find those big, hairy problems to solve within your organization and 
um, the fact that you don't need permission to uh, solve problems that organize that would impact your organization at whatever level you are, team, division, or company, depending on the um, type um, or growth of your growth size of your of your company. So there are three key elements on how to move from being in that bucket of most PMs to how do I become visible. Um, first is really you got to know yourself, um, and as you know, this is pretty. It might become a little ephemeral, but it's not. It's really as basic as um, knowing what makes you um, what makes you effective today, what makes you effective in your work and in your life. The second is um, finding an opportunity, really looking, doing in a way um, organizational mapping and trying to raise awareness of the problems that your organization has. And finally, um, using those results that you would get from solving those big complex problems um, to stimulate and accelerate your career growth. And with that, we'll start with uh, the first step um, and with the, with the uh, quote that knowing others is intelligence, but knowing yourself is true wisdom. And mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. So hopefully that will give you a perspective that mastering yourself is where it all starts. So knowing yourself, uh, what does it actually that mean? It means... Um, looking at all the dimensions um, of what makes you you. In our course uh, that we're gonna run very soon, uh, we'll cover a few areas of how do you actually find my strength? And today we offer you in a way, um, a framework that you can um, apply uh, right after you uh, finish uh, our attending this, uh, this talk and first understand what makes me actually effective today, um, who am I at my best? Um, what is the positive feedback that I received at my work um, by doing 360 review? Um, you might use strength finders that are easily available online. And you also can look up and understand who are the leaders that uh, truly inspire you and learn from them, but also understand what makes them tick, what makes them very effective um, in doing their leadership work. Um, so let's start with first one, what makes me um, effective? So we offer a few prompts uh, for you to kind of start digging a little bit more within yourself. Uh, we offer a little bit of reflection. And the questions are, hey, so what am I good at? What gives me confidence? Um, what is the positive recent feedback that I received? Uh, we also encourage you to think about challenges that you recently overcome in your, um, at your current role, but also try to remember what do people often consult me about? What do they come to you? What type of questions they ask? And this is kind of the first step towards understanding yourself is really um, doing that um, self in a work, asking questions um, yourself. With the second dimension being, um, so who are the leaders that inspire me? Um, we always recommend looking at uh, role models. And um, I'm pretty sure you have someone in your close circle or maybe a thought leader that you are truly inspired by maybe their leadership style. Maybe you've seen how they lead effective hands on, uh, all hands or product huddles, whatever that is. But um, we recommend you reach out to them. Or maybe if you are unable, if they're not available, um, think about what do you think they're good at? So pretty much the same questions that you apply to yourself, trying to understand a little bit more yourself and your inner strength, um, take the same questions and apply them to a leader that inspires you. Um, of course, it will be better if you can uh, reach out and have, let's say, 20, 15 minutes of coffee chat and in my experience, uh, rarely do people um, reject this type of invitation, especially when you tell them that, hey, I'm on this leadership journey and I'm trying to uh, raise, increase my self-awareness. I'm learning more about leadership. Um, I'm inspired by your uh, communication, uh, leadership style, whatever. Invite them for that coffee chat and ask those questions directly. And you'll be surprised at how simple yet profoundly insightful those answers might be and then you might also realize that oh i'm actually not too not too far there is a lot there is a lot in common so that's the second dimension the third dimension uh that we recommend to look as a part of that 
increasing your self-awareness or really understanding your self-framework is really understanding who am I at my best. Uh, the uh, We have exercise that is inspired uh, by uh, organizational psychologist Adam Grant, and it's called Reflected Best Self. Um, we uh, modified it slightly and offer it as a way to learn about stories um, or hear stories from other people in your informal circle, um, circle stories of when you were at your best um, so that you could understand um, what makes me shine? What do people notice? But also, what are the moments that activate, or like what are those triggers that activate moments when you at your best? So that you can take that knowledge, you can take those insights and really optimize your career, the choices that you make, either to take one project or not to take, to say yes or no something to something, and optimize for those moments, moments of uh, best self. And finally, the last dimension of that knowing yourself is really uh, relying on the feedback from 360 review. Feedback is a gift. Um, it's you know it's a cliche, but this is very true in my experience. My um, some of my biggest grown moments um, professionally were when I was receiving feedback, both positive and constructive, especially in my professional life. So we. I highly recommend if your company doesn't follow any um, official 360 performance review, um, do it yourself. Uh, this is where you will learn so much that uh, it will help not only to accelerate your career, but also increase that um, knowledge about, about yourself. What, what, what are the strengths? Uh, what can you lean on in your next project? Um, and it's pretty simple. You can do it um, li literally next week. Uh, come up with a few questions that are um, widely available, um, such as what uh, can I do better? Um, what do I do well today? And then gather that feedback, analyze it, um, and really put on your product manager hat, um, synthesize that information and find common themes. What are the strengths that come out in your professional world? And combining all of that, uh, you can create what we call as a self-awareness -aware canvas. Um, this is also the, um, this is really a culmination of uh, all of those dimensions that um, I've just walked us through all in one place. Highly recommend using a visual tool such as Miro uh, to put it all together. Uh, take all the feedback that you received, both from 360, from uh, reflected best self, uh, from your personal reflection, um, and again, you can use, uh, well, actually one of my clients used chat GPT to really analyze that information to save time to find common themes. And it really helped her, um, you know, just spit out a few keywords. So use tools that are available to you. You don't have to do it by, by hand because again, we all have a lot of um, product managers are busy. Like it's, it's, it's difficult to find moments for, for reflection and synthesis outside of our VM work. Um, so find common themes, uh, plot them on that visual tool, um, and you really use that canvas um, as a first conversation starter with your with your manager. Um, use it as a conversation starter with yourself. Next time you're making a difficult decision or you're trying to figure out, uh, do I stay here? Do I move to another team? Or do I just move to another organization? Go back to this canvas. Uh, maybe refresh it if it's been some time. I personally recommend it doing at least once a year because um, our strength do change. Uh, they don't change every year, but they do change every three years or so. Um, so uh, do that. Use it for your career conversation with the manager. Use it to help you make decisions. Again, if something important coming up and you're just not sure, do I take it or not? Well, take a look at your strengths. Take a look at um, some of the literature skips that you already have, but also uh, what what are the skills that you still need to um, to to gain? What growth areas that you can uh, step into? And maybe that project will help or maybe it'll just derail you from where you want to be. Um, really cool tool, um, I would say. And then I think a lot of, again, just our former students and also um, coaches really found a lot of insights just having this canvas and putting everything in one place. So that's, um, I would say, kind of the final part of that uh, building your self-awareness or really leaning and understanding your strengths 
so that we could move on to that second key element of how to uh, go from that being most PM in the bucket of most PMs to visible PM is find an opportunity uh, that actually matches your strengths to an important challenge. And of course, it sounds sounds good in theory, but what does it mean in in actual um, in actual world in actual practice? The uh, and we can move on to the next slide. So the we know that you know we cannot solve problems with the same thinking we used to when we created them. So when we start thinking of how do I move beyond just the delivery and the execution part into solving the big problems. Here we have to um, have a slightly different mindset. So hopefully that first kind of step or exercise really helped you to um, start gaining at that different mindset. But the second one is um, understand the simple truth that every product organization has um, issues. Your leadership has changed. Uh, there, are, there are risks of inflation. Um, the, the market has changed, the demand. Uh, you have new VP of product coming in. Uh, there, is, uh, there is now two product teams instead of one. Maybe you uh, went into or expanded your portfolio of products. So there are no companies, no organizations where there are no, uh, no challenges or no complexities that are created by... Um, changing of strategy, changing of scope, uh, looking at the different markets. So just accepting that fact would help you uh, kind of step back uh, and relax into the fact that, um, yes, I can actually find that big challenge or problem and I can solve it because they always exist. And with what we recommend is, uh, of course, you can kind of improve what you already do, um, but in reality, it would probably bring the same results it was delivering to you um, before. But if you try to look at, um, if I want to be visible, we recommend improving how you actually do it. And what leaders do or visible PMs is that um, that how means looking at, at the processes. It means looking not just at your team, but it lo means looking cross-functionally across organization. Um, there was a recent podcast, um, but actually um, I, I would mention the uh, book instead of podcast, uh, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy. If you read this book, um, you might recall that the author mentions that uh, good leaders are not just you know those charismatic, influential, uh, visionary ones, but good leaders are those who um, understand what current challenges organization is going through, rec recognizes them and willing to solve them, but also willing to articulate them to the rest of organization and the plan to how overcome them. So we uh, encourage you to look across organization, um, kind of like in a way mapping mapping your, um, your organization to understand um, what problems could be solved and then matching your strengths to that specific area. And now, of course, we talk about a specific framework um, and without kind of adding any more information, um, well, I'll just briefly say that there is um, a stakeholder area that always will have complexities. There is um, knowledge area that always will have complexities and a team culture. So think about stakeholder as hey, there is a misalignment. They're constantly pinging me on Slack or they go directly to developers. They're asking me, why are we working on this? So this is a net stakeholder realm. Um, with the knowledge being that, oh my God, we're just, we're scaling and then all the knowledge lives in the hands of the first employees. Uh, we don't have any wiki. Customer support always goes to me to uh, talk about product and the new features. Um, so this is kind of the knowledge um, area. But the final being your team culture uh, where Maybe there is a lack of goals, a lack of vision, and team feels also misaligned. Um, every time someone leaves on for PTO, it feels like this is like you just can never leave. Uh, it feels like something someone's gonna drop the ball next day. So it's a very stressful time. Um, so that's kind of like also leaves in that uh, team team culture realm. And if you take insights that you've got from the first framework from your self-awareness canvas, some of those strengths and apply them to a specific area, you will see that, hey, if I'm a good storyteller and I know how to set the goals, maybe I should focus on that stakeholder um, trust area. Or if I'm very detail-oriented, I have resilience. Um, I also write like 
struct structuring uh, content, maybe looking at the knowledge and simplifying or solving challenges in that area might work the best for you. Or maybe you are really a people person. There is a high um, EQ, you're very empathetic, humble, but you also feel that not just necessarily um, you can put a number, but you feel something is off uh, with a culture, you can tackle that area. And then you can put it all on also visual tool. We, again, we're using Miro to kind of um, help help you out during the course to map out um, complexities and uh, how do they actually feel, but we offer, you know, four simple questions. So take those three areas, step back, and then step back and really ask yourself, um, how do I feel about that stakeholders trust that we have? Um, how do, how does our knowledge area feel? What about culture? And really put the first emoji that comes to mind. This is your first emotional response to what actually might be true. Um, and then put a few reasons for why you feel in that way, as well as um, is this really important to solve? And why do you think that's important? With the final question is understanding how much control or influence do you really have in that area? And this is a very important question because um, many kind of those big hairy challenges that you will find they might not be in your control to solve. They might not be in your sphere of influence. So understanding what you can influence within your org, org is very important. Um, and to understand and be honest with yourself. And with with that, I'm gonna um, pass to Danny to to you to really walk us through the how do I what do I do with those challenges that I just identified. Cool. Thank you so much, Katya. So just a quick recap. We all started from like, we want to become visible PMs and basically becoming a visible PM means doing what most of the other PMs don't do, which means working on additional projects that are usually big, complex things that happen in your area of work, in your team and your squad, but that doesn't necessarily are connected with quarterly KPIs, your feature delivery and so on. And that starts from understanding your strengths, what are your best skills and then pick an opportunity that will match those skills. So if you're good with trust, work with stakeholders. If you're an empathetic person, focus on your team and so on. So there are definitely tons of opportunities, as Katya said. Every company evolves. We all raise money and we get new customers or people join, people leave. Maybe there is a merger, maybe a competitor is doing something. Like there are plenty of things that make the work complex and those things accumulate over time. So a very good strategy to become visible is to identify one area that is too complex and it's very difficult to work in this setup and then just improve it, reduce the complexity, make it simpler. So the third step is to actually run an initiative like that and leverage it for your visibility and for your growth. Running a leadership initiative or high visibility initiative is not about firefighting or crisis management. It's not about, you know, plugging the hole. It's more about sitting down finding the symptoms of this problem, like what actually causes them, and trying to go through those symptoms and find the root cause. What is the bottom underlying reason that leads to this problem arising? And that could be that you have miscommunication or your like, communication culture is not good enough, or maybe the documents get outdated very quickly, or people don't talk about goals and everybody understands how you should work slightly differently between you and, and stakeholders. So that also leads to those complexities and finding the root cause is basically how you should solve them. So you don't do the firefighting because this is what takes the most time, but has the least impact. Solving root causes is the ideal um, strategy. You might be asking, so, okay, I found an area. What do I do next? Do I partner up with somebody? Do I talk to my manager? But we think that if you want to be a visible PM, you need to be proactive. If you are working on something, that will improve your organization or your team culture or stakeholder relationship, everybody will support you. That's a good thing to do. So you don't need to ask for a permission because you're not breaking anything and you're not asking for additional budget. And you can do it. You have your 40 hours more or less per week. You can dedicate a couple of hours every week to focus on that. And that will be more than enough. Of course, you should not take half of your time, but you don't really need to ask for permission. You just, if you want to talk to your manager, you probably come to them and explain your reasoning and say like, I would like to do that. What do you think? But it's not about permission like, or what would you focus on? Like involve them in prioritization. Basically, that means you, you start a leadership initiative at your company on top of your product work, where you pick one focus uh, area, 
you may be paired with somebody if you don't want to work solo. Uh, maybe you find a person who also suffers from that stakeholder relationship. Maybe that's one of your stakeholders, by the way. And two of you, you decide to make it better. You improve trust into the product team and stakeholders. Maybe they learn a little bit about product processes and what it means to have product mindset and product thinking. So two of you can drive it effectively. You would be a leader in this initiative because you came up with this idea, you invited them to run the project. So if you start like that, it's higher ch chances that something good will happen out of it. And we recommend to take it really slow. Maybe pick a timeline of four weeks, maybe six weeks, where you can work on that two of you or three of you every week for a couple of hours, not more than that. You just, you know, you meet every week, you plan what you're going to be doing. Maybe you need to update the wiki or create a, a KPI tree for your team or create a document that will be uh, about roles and responsibilities of you and stakeholders, share it and that everybody knows that will make the work the way you do slightly better. It will reduce the complexity. And if you leave it, it means you've been able to spot an opportunity and find something that will be improving the overall health of the product organization. Once you pick like something like that, you find a person who would like to do that with you, make it public. This is the visibility part. You can talk to your manager, you can get their support. So you all have one-on-ones. Bring this topic to the next one-on-one, say, I found this problem. I think it's important to solve. Those are the symptoms. I think this is the root cause. I have this guy who will support me. We're doing it in four weeks. What do you think we should focus on first? Something like that. Again, don't really um, ask for permission, just inform them. If they don't like you working on this initiative or they think it's not the right time, they will push back. Leave them the option to push back, but don't say like, can I do that? Like, that's not the right position. If you want to be a visible PM that assumes more leadership responsibilities, you need to be a little bit more assertive. If people don't like it, they will push back. Leave them this opportunity. Once you get your manager buy-in, I think this is really important so that they are on board because if they don't like it, they will block you right away on, and they will tell you that, yeah, let's do this. So they should be on your team as a support and then just make it public. Find a Slack channel. It could be general. It could be product org channel. It could be a PM circle and announce it saying that we're going to be doing that. That's me and my buddy. We identified this problem. We're going to keep you posted and share it with them. Share it during the relevant meetings. It could be all hands. It could be product recap. It could be big picture uh, meeting that you have maybe every every month or so. Maybe it could be monthly business review, quarterly business review. So. Make sure people know that this initiative exists and that you're leading it. And this is what are your goals. You're reducing this complexity of problem area and just keep sharing progress with them every two weeks. It could be as small as just a message on Slack, could be a, a video recording, could be a loom of couple of minutes where you go through progress and just do it every two weeks. If you pick four weeks, it's basically one or two progress share updates and then finish it and wrap it up, wrap it up saying, this is what we have achieved. This is how you can use it. And this is what made the life better. If you follow this framework, you can pick one such initiative roughly every quarter. If it takes you four to six weeks to run it, you can start uh, somewhere in the middle of the quarter because like first two weeks is usually pro uh, quarter kickoff. Last two weeks is usually next quarter planning and wrap up. So in the middle, you have a little bit of room. This is the perfect time to do something on top of your delivery and discovery work. So if you run one initiative like that every quarter, you will accumulate better leadership skills. People will see you and you will be more visible. They will trust you. They will be more willing to join your cause. And you can switch between working on stakeholders area a little bit, then moving into knowledge, then improving team culture and, and motivation. And then again to knowledge and again to team culture. You know, every quarter you will have new complexities that appear in your product organization. So there should be no problem finding a project like that. And most of the people don't do this. So there should be plenty of opportunities that you can choose from. With time, you can recruit uh, more people to join your team if you just do it in the beginning individually or pair with another person. Maybe then as a team of three, maybe that's a team of four. And suddenly you're not leading your own product team, which is a cross-functional unit, but also you have this informal team that is working on improving the health and status of the product organization, which is pretty cool. That makes you visible and that makes you also desirable because those people are positive change actors in the company. And of course, they make the area around them bigger. So you would want to support those people, give them more responsibilities, promote them uh, and elevate them basically. So this productivity, this recipe is what we offer for you to become a more visible PM. That being said, 
being a visible PM, this is just you know the surface area. Below that, there are like, how do I recruit people? How do I get manager buy-in? What is the right complexity to choose? How do I spot them? What is what should go in the scope? What should I leave out? Like I have multiple symptoms, which of them are more important than the rest? Like there are tons of questions that you will face and running leadership initiatives is pretty challenging if you've never done this before. So we packed all of those questions and knowledge. And as Katya said, this course is a highlight. This presentation is the highlight of the course that we created. So if you want to go deeper, we invite you to join the course that we are running together with Reforge. It starts in a couple of weeks and there are still spots available. But this is the moment where we go deeper into every specific detail about your organizational awareness, about your self-awareness, uh, how to do a kickoff workshop, how to make progress and find and lead this impact. So that's a very reusable framework. As you can understand, if you learn it once, you can use it every quarter, you can use it in any organization. You might even use it outside of product. You could be used by designers or developers. It's pretty universal. So we invite you to join the course. It's going to be a very intimate setting with around 100 people, all of them aspiring to become more visible and to become product leaders. And we, you'll get support from us, from a lot of frameworks, a lot of templates, and also we have the free product guests. We already scheduled some people from Disney, Microsoft, and LinkedIn to join us and share about their leadership journey and how we help them. So it starts in a couple of weeks. We're going to share the link in the chat. Please take a look. You can easily expensify it through your learning and development budget. So most of the managers who hear like, I would like to grow better and become a leader, they approve those kinds of things. With that, we're wrapping up the main body of the presentation and moving to the Q&A. So we have quite a few things in the questions. I'll just probably pick one with the most upvotes. Okay, Pinar, you have a question about when is the right time to give up from the company. Would you like to unmute yourself and give us a little bit more context about this question? Hello. Hey. Hi, hello. Um, actually, the context is, um, I mean, um, we try sometimes um, different methods uh, like we explained and I feel like I tried some of them and um, but um, I also uh, work remotely and I feel like I'm not getting enough visibility so I'm also um, considering about to give up the company so but um, I'm having like challenges when uh, or should I fight more so uh, that was the question yeah I think it's an important choice. It's never an easy choice, but yeah. think about the kind of resistance and pushback that you experience when you run such an initiative. If your manager doesn't support you, if nobody pays attention to what you're doing, if your stakeholders are not interested in improving stakeholder relationship, if your company is like prioritizing for firefighting instead of improving your VKs and internal, internal knowledge sharing, that's a lot of external things that are kind of bad signals and red flags that this company doesn't have a strong product culture, or at least they're not interested in improving and growing. Like you want to grow, but the organization doesn't want to grow in, in the sense of like professionalism and how they work. That could be red flags for you to sit down and say, okay, should I stay here and continue accumulating my hard skills, like running delivery, running discovery, building features, or do I want to find another place that would be more recipient to um, improving and like, working better so think about like if you try something and you hustle if people respond to that positively or they don't care or it's mostly like negative pushback like why are you working on that don't you have enough work to do like those kind of things like usually people support those initiatives so if you don't get that that could be a reason like or like a tip if you want to think that you should be giving up for the company yeah thank you all right, we have next question with five upvotes was by anonymous person. So I'm just going to read it out. Do you have any it, recommendations? Sorry to interrupt. There is one in answered, but it was not answered. It has 10 oh. upvotes. Yeah, why don't we do that? Pick um, it then. Is there a more specific question we can ask rather than what can I do better? I guess it relates, uh, it goes back to that 360 feedback. Uh, but Heidi, would you mind stepping forward and uh, Given us a little bit more context 
Uh, is that what you yeah, meant? Sure, sure. So I, I kind of meant what I said in the question, but oftentimes, and the feedback I got on the question was helpful, but I'd be curious to hear from you all. Oftentimes when we ask, hey, what can I do better? There are two things that I've seen happen. One, someone says, oh, but you're doing great or you're doing fine. Keep doing what you're doing. Or the second thing is, it really requires a lot of care and attention for our teammates as they're working with us to kind of like reflect and think of those things that they can give constructive feedback on. And it requires someone to be very like introspective and uh, reflective, which we do a lot in our work, but not always when it comes to our peers. So I'm curious if there are more specific questions that will prompt uh, reflection and thoughtfulness in a way that's not, I don't want to say too burdensome on people, but you know, and everyone has mm -hmm. a lot going on and you know, how can we give people like easy ways to provide constructive feedback that's actually helpful mm -hmm. to us. Yeah, no, thank you for question. I think you are, uh, you kind of touched very important things or first is that not many people are good at giving feedback, right? We just don't know what good feedback is. Um, and then the second, yes, we, uh, you know, not many people have time to do that. So we recommend, uh, first of all, not asking it directly necessarily, but uh, creating a Google form with a few questions and to help you kind of really make it very concrete. One question that we recommend to ask is, uh, please describe one or two situations where it did exceptionally well as whatever your role, right? So this is, uh, this will, push another person to really think about the moment in the past when you did well to bring a little bit more concrete examples to feedback rather than say, oh, you know, you're doing great at one, two, three communication, um, being eloquent and uh, being concise, let's say, right? Without giving it specific examples. Um, the second we recommend uh, really talking about um, not being personal and to avoid being personal is really asking a question about your um, skills and behaviors. Uh, one of those questions could be, um, what are the existing skills or behaviors you would recommend um, I adopt and why? Same as which skills I, you would recommend I continue to build and why? So though that again will push another person to think about a very specific thing outside of your personality, outside of being, you know, very personal to, okay, well, you might be having, um, you have a great prioritization skills, why don't you continue building on that? Or to say, hey, there is a little bit of a, um, you might be lacking um, in the area of uh, big picture thinking, let's say. Um, did, did I answer your question, Heidi? Yeah, I think so, thank you. Thank you. One comment from my side as well, that you can always ask openly, what would you recommend me to do to advance my career? And your managers probably know better and they have better visibility into the organization. And so like, if you want to advance your career, you should be working on that. It's not like improve my skills because it's very low level question. Ask higher level. I want to grow and I want to have more impact and I want to have more positive impact. What should I work on to get there? And most likely they will support you with that. So I think we have time for one more question. There is. One. Yeah, we have one with five upvotes. I think where it's an anonymous. I think this is the one that I started last time. So do you have any recommendations on what to do with someone if visit is visible, but there are no opportunities. So it's a flat org structure hiring product leaders externally, and so on. Hmm. So no opportunities, I think that might not be very close to reality. You always can find something that doesn't work. But if you see that everything is fine, you can also think about how to improve something that works already well. So if we, what we offer to you as an algorithm, you look at something that doesn't work and then fix it, you can also apply the same look at something that works but then instead of root causes and symptoms, why it's broken, focus on the root causes and symptoms, why it works well, and then try to replicate in a different area. For example, I've done it in the past where we had uh, three different teams. One of them was working on monetization, another on like retention, and the third one was about activation and sign up. 
And we actually realized that if we bring those teams together a little bit closer and share some of the KPIs, we can create a more cohesive user journey that starts during sign up. Then we monetize at the right moment and then we keep retaining them, but we follow the same narrative. So, you know, like bringing some of the teams together or bringing some of the areas together and cross sharing their goals could be also an option. So you can think like we have a lot of components now product organizations, such as features, teams, strategy goals, and so on. What is like a, an ingredients in your kitchen? You open uh, your cupboard and you see lots of different things. Those could be your features, teams, and so on. What if you look at them and you can mix them in a different way? Would you come up with a new dish that tastes better and is uh, helping the business? It could be something like that. So in that case, just you know, see what is available for you. And maybe if you rearrange some of the elements, they could work better. And the, the sum would be greater than all of the elements separately. So that could be your initiative to slightly reposition some of the features or ownership or goals on a very local level to make things more uh, connected with each other. So that could be when you don't have opportunities and everything works well, you can try to improve what works already well.